The Thorough Analysis of the Origin of Species, Lesson 14. Why is the color of rose various? It's Chapter 5, Laws of Variations. Though variability is generally related to the conditions to which each species has been exposed during lots of generations, it is very difficult to decide how far the changed conditions such as climate, food, etc. have acted. In all cases, there are two factors. The one is the character of conditions which is the external and the other is the character of organism which is the internal nature of the organisms. This is much more important of the two. Considering that animals of the same species inhabiting in the farther northern part have thicker and better fur, it is clear that surroundings have produced some definite effect. There can be no doubt that use and strengthened and enlarged certain parts and disuse diminished them in domestic animals. The eyes of moles and of some burrowing rodents are rudimentary in size, and the wing of ostrich is small. Their rudimentary condition in some other genera is not as cases of inherited mutilations but as due to the effect of long-continued disuse, so that in accordance with the old view of the blind animal having been separately created for the American and the European caverns, very close similarity in their organization and affinities might have been expected. This is certainly not the case if we look at the two whole faunas. Professor Schilliman captured two cave rats at above half a mile distance from the mouth of the cave. Their eyes were lustrous and of large size. These animals, after having been exposed for about a month to a graduate light, acquired a dim perception of objects. This experimental fact makes us conclude that the eyes of the rat were degenerated insufficiently and that the blind rat had not been created specially and separately for the cave. It would be difficult to give any rational explanation of the affinities of the blind cave animals to the other inhabitants of the two continents on the ordinary view of their independent creation. Charles Darwin emphasizes that the separate or the independent creation cannot explain various affinities of the animals rationally. Acclamation can be a cause of variation. The rat and the mouse cannot be considered as domestic animals, but they have been transported by man to many parts of the world and now have a far wider range than any other rodent. Elephant and rhinoceros formerly endured a glacial climate, but now they are confined to the category of a tropical animal. Though their fossils are discovered in the Arctic region, they currently are not found there. It seems to be because they could not endure the climate to be exterminated. This is an example to indicate that organisms are flexible and plastic. Correlated variation means that 
the whole organizations are tied together during its growth and development and that when slight variations in any one part occur, other parts become modified and they are accumulated through natural selection. The relation between complete whiteness and blue eyes in cats, the relation between feathered feet and skin betwixt the outer toes in pigeon, the relation between the presence of more or less down on the young pigeon when first hatched and the future color of its plumage are good examples of correlated variation. It is difficult to get a cow to give much milk and to fatten readily. The same varieties of the cabbage do not yield abundant and nutritious foliage and a copious supply of oil-bearing seeds. When the seeds in our fruits become atrophied, the fruit itself gains largely in size and quality. As a matter of fact, the nature of the bond being quite obscure, correlated variation may be one of the causes of the variation. On the view that each species has been independently created with all its parts as we now see them, I can see no explanation. But on the view that groups of species are descended from some other species and have been modified through natural selection, I think we can obtain some light. The wing of a bat is homologous with the forefoot of a rat. Therefore, we cannot say that a bat and a rat had been created separately. But this reality is explained easily by the logic of natural selection. The extraordinary development of a specific part of a species is an accumulation of a large amount of natural selection and the interrelation of external appearances is a fashion that natural selection only acts. On the ordinary view of each species having been independently created, why should that part of the structure which differs from the same parts in other independently created species of the same genus be more variable than those parts which are closely alike in the several species. Specific characters of a species are more variable than generic characters. Charles Darwin asks us, why are the four feet of a rat changed easily? if a rat and a bat were created separately. The color of a rose is various. If the color of all roses is red, it can be character of rose genus, but the variety of rose color is the character of species. It is already known that specific characters are more variable than generic characters. The first half of chapter 5 ends here, and the second half will be continued soon. Shalom.